All right, Black Friday shopping is complete, the medical bills are en route, and it's time to talk about how to host a Veskmas Christmas session for your Starfinder game on this episode of The Local Disaster Tour Guide. Happy holidays, travelers and tourists. My name is Mark, and I am the Local Disaster Tour Guide. That's right. I am a storyteller who thinks that holiday shopping should have a survival rate comparable to the Hunger Games. Welcome to a journey through the fantastic world of TTRPGs like Pathfinder and Starfinder. Today I'm going to be doing a special storytelling episode for my channel, and I'm going to be talking about one of my group's favorite holiday traditions. It is our annual Veskmas Shop 'em and Drop 'em sales event that we do to celebrate Christmas as a group every year. So yes, this is a bit silly, but I invite you to join me as I discuss one of our group's favorite holiday traditions. And before we dive too deep into that, if your group has a particular holiday tradition that you enjoy, let me know about it in the comments section down below. I feel like every gaming table has different traditions and different fun things that they do to celebrate the holiday season, and I'm interested to hear what crazy and silly ideas your group uses to celebrate the holidays as well. Let's get started. Okay, so let me start this video off by talking a little bit about what Veskmas is and, and how I use it at my gaming table. Veskmas is my ridiculous spin on the holiday of Christmas and as part of my Starfinder game every year I give my players a chance to recreate a only slightly exaggerated version of Black Friday shopping with what I deem the annual Veskmas Shop 'em and Drop 'em sales event where the characters in my Starfinder game get the opportunity to battle a raging horde of shoppers in a futuristic mall for first dibs at the latest gear and tech that has been released. It is over the top, it is absurd, it is hilarious, and this is probably one of my favorite holiday traditions with my gaming group, and I just thought I would share it with you all. Ultimately, my players are battling to earn the blessing of the saint of Veskmas, Scarlet Claws. Now, I will say this in regards to Veskmas. I am not the first person who came up with the idea of playing with the idea of Christmas and saying Veskmas instead. There was a Starfinder blogger several years ago who came up with this idea of Veskmas that I borrowed and put my own crazy Black Friday shopping spin on. I have not been able to find who that blogger was, and I don't know if that blog is still up or not. I am going to keep searching, and if I can find that blogger before this video goes live, I will be throwing a link to their blog down in the video description. Veskmas was not my original idea. I did get it from somebody else. But ultimately, this serves as a fun take on the sometimes chaotic and materialistic chaos that can erupt around the holiday season. It is a fun opportunity for me as a storyteller to give my players access to all kinds of crazy gear and all kinds of loot. I get to be super generous, I get to have an over-the-top comic gaming session, and it's just a ton of fun. Now, if you are a storyteller who is interested in running a Veskmas Shop 'em and Drop 'em sales event, let me go ahead and give you an important meta consideration that you will want to keep in mind for your game, and that is this particular style of session is intended to give your players way too much loot. And as a storyteller, that is something you're going to want to plan for. Every time I run a Veskmas Shop 'em and Drop 'em, one of the things that I do is I adjust how much gear I am passing out to my party both before and after this particular session. To give you an example, right now I am running my players through the Attack of the Swarm Adventure Path and if you're familiar with book one of that adventure path, there is a pretty significant chunk of that book where the players don't really have an opportunity to go shopping or to acquire new gear. And I'm kind of using Veskmas Shop 'em and Drop 'em as the gear drop for this particular chunk of my adventure. Since there's not a lot of loot dropping at this particular point in the adventure, 
this special session is going to fit very nicely, but if I was running a regular game, I would probably tone down the amount of character wealth I was giving out for a while so that the overall amount of treasure that the party possesses would normalize over a period of time. And I will say, if you run a Vesquemus Shopum and Dropum, you probably want to be prepared for the fact that for at least a few sessions your players are probably going to be a little bit overgeared, but hey, that's okay, that's part of the fun. Now, I will tell you that the standard Vesquemus Shopum and Dropum sales event does take some setup as a storyteller. If you want to use this style of game, you definitely need to do some prep work ahead of time. And generally, I have found there are three kind of major categories you need to think your way through. And remember, the goal of this session is to create an absurd caricature of the holiday shopping experience. It is intended to be over the top. But the main things you want to consider is you want to, one, build out the shopping location where your players are going to be battling for the latest holiday gifts. Second, you want to set the right holiday mood. And third, you want to determine what prize your players are ultimately competing for. Step one, you want to build the shopping location. And me personally, I like to go with classic 70s and 80s tropes and create a futuristic space mall that my players are battling through. It's an easy way to insert a number of different ridiculous shops that my players can search for goods at. And it offers a nice compact location where you can cram hundreds upon hundreds of people who are frantically scrambling for the latest gifts. A mall is not the necessary location, but I think it's pretty flavorful and can fit the holiday themes pretty well. But the biggest thing you want to consider is the shopping experience and therefore the shops that are available for your players. And this is where a lot of the behind the scenes work for this kind of game is going to occur. What you want to do is you want to pick a level range of items that your players can potentially shop for. So, for example, if you have a second level party, you might want to say level 1 through level 4 items can potentially be bought in this mall. Then, you want to go through the core rulebook, or the armory, or tech revolution, or any of the other source books for Starfinder, and just create a master list of different level 1 through 4 items that your players might be able to find, and you want to sort them into different shopping locations. Now me, when I set up my shopping mall for this event, I like to have two different types of shopping locations. Regular shops and automated kiosks. The regular shops have a limited supply of particular items from the master list that you've created, and players that get to one of these shops can attempt to grab one of these items and take it to the register for purchase. Typically in these sessions, I will have the items marked off anywhere from 5 to 20 percent, depending on the shop, depending on the item, and just the mood that I'm in in a particular moment. But you want to have a handy list of the things that are available in the shops, as well as a quantity of items available, because as we all know when it comes to holiday shopping, supplies do not last long. The second type of shopping location that I offer my players is automated gift kiosks, where a player can enter a specific amount of credits and get a random item of a particular sort. Now, I do tell my players that this is a little bit of a risky proposition. The cost of using a kiosk is averaged out to be slightly more expensive than the most common item that the kiosk will dispense. So, if most of the items in a kiosk are level 1 items, then the price of that kiosk is probably going to be about 15% more than the average price of the level 1 items available. However, there is also a small percentage chance that the kiosk might dispense a level 2, level 3, or level 4 item instead, which would be at a massive discount. By the way, I like to add a fun twist to these kiosks in that they're not the best maintained of items, 
meaning that sometimes the gift doesn't just drop down normally, but rather shoots out of the kiosk at a ridiculous velocity, and the player has to try to grab it before it fires off into the crowd of holiday shoppers. Good luck getting it back if that happens. Of course, when it comes to this mad rush of holiday shopping, you don't want to make it too easy on your players. They need to work to get at those really good holiday deals, and that means that wherever they're going shopping, there needs to be some defenses in place. Typically what I do is I will design a three-storied mall with a variety of barricades, maybe greased stairs, and other defenses that have been put in place to help keep the frenzied holiday shoppers at bay. Additionally, all of the retail workers in this mall have been provided riot gear to help keep them safe. Maybe. And it is important to note that when the shopping begins, players will be at the bottom floor of the mall, which has only the most basic of shops, and if you want to get to the really good Vesquemus gifts, you need to fight your way to the top of the mall. It is worth noting that the retail workers in this mall do have a sense of survival, and you may have to grapple them as they flee in order to get them to the register so you can check out and make your purchase. Additionally, this mall is going to come with many automated defenses that will occasionally activate to help control the chaos this holiday season. Maybe the fire suppression system will activate. I mean, it's pretty likely that the holiday shoppers are going to set something on fire at some point, so having an overactive fire suppression system is worthwhile. And while you're at it, why not include pit traps, violent bursts of wind, and other exciting, engaging environmental hazards that the eager holiday shopper needs to overcome to get at their gift. The point is, you really want to make this sales event an appropriate challenge for your party. However, some people have really taken the reason for the season to heart, and they are there to help holiday shoppers experience the thrill of this particular sale. In particular, my mall comes equipped with several Skittermander rats. Rapid Ascent Trebuchet Teams. Yes, that's right. For a tiny fee, you can pay a team of We Swear They're Trained Skittermanders to load you into a trebuchet and attempt to fling you to the higher floors of the mall. Please remember to sign all release forms before entering the trebuchet. This is a risky but potentially rewarding way to get ahead of the crowd and get the first shot at the holiday deals that are on sale. The point is, when you build out the shopping center for your Vesquemus shop em and drop em event, you want to ensure that your players are more terrified of it than they are of the standard war zone. However, the holiday season is more than just the shopping environment. You also want to set the mood and make sure that your player characters are truly experiencing the thrill of the holidays. And I suggest that the first step to setting the mood for this particular session is to find the most absurd Christmas techno remix music that you can find to play in the background while your session is taking place. I apologize for nothing with this session. Next up, to really capture the rush of the season, your player characters should not be shopping alone. There should be a horde of holiday shoppers who have been unleashed into this mall, not unlike a wave of relentless undead seeking to devour the flesh of the living. Anyone who has worked retail during the holiday season knows why this is part of the game. Players should find themselves shoulder to shoulder with familiar NPCs wearing full military fatigues and ready for the battle that is to come. Every year I get to have a little bit of fun, including the NPC director of HR, who absolutely loves the annual shop em and drop em sales event. And of course, what would the holidays be without a media spectacle? Yes, that's right, while the Vesquemus shop em and drop em sales event is taking place, television cameras are capturing the action, and a pair of enthusiastic announcers are busy describing the carnage, yeah, I guess that's a good term for shopping, are busy describing the carnage for the viewing audience's enjoyment. But ultimately, what are the holidays if not a brutal competition for supremacy, and that means that your players should go into this event with a specific goal in mind, and in my game, that is, the players are competing to earn the blessing of the Vesk Warlord Scarlet Claws. 
At the start of the Veskmas Shop 'em and Drop 'em sales event, all competitors are given a cred stick, which conveniently has an amount of credits preloaded onto it that is equal to the number of credits that the party should earn at their particular level. So maybe 2,000 credits, maybe 5,000 credits, whatever the normal amount should be. The goal that your party is chasing is for them to make the best use of the credits they have available. So as your party gathers different gifts for the holiday, you want to track how much of their credits they have spent and the actual value of the items that they have obtained. The goal at the end of the entire event is to be the person that walks away with the highest value of items that exceeds the original amount of credits that the particular person started with. So, for example, if you go into a Veskmas shop them and drop them with 5,000 credits and you leave with 8,000 credits worth of items, you have had a successful holiday shopping event. The player who ultimately exceeds the original value of their cred stick the most is the player that earns the blessing of Scarlet Claws. Why? Because they are the player that has truly embraced the reason for the season, which we all know is relentless materialism and senseless violence. Now, it is up to you as a storyteller to decide exactly what the blessing of Scarlet Claws is going to be. Typically for me, it's something like free lucky rerolls that they get to use in combat in a future game session, or something along those lines. Maybe some other magical effect that Scarlet Claws blesses them with for a few days. But truthfully, the most important portion of earning the blessing of Scarlet Claws is being able to lord it over their friends that they were the most successful shopper and they got the best deals. So, anyways... That is a short introduction to the madness of one of my group's favorite holiday events. I am planning on doing it again with my gaming group this year. It is a ton of fun. It is a hilarious parody of what the holiday season can turn into sometimes. And my players get a huge kick out of it. So, if you're a game master who wants to dump some absurd treasure on your party for the holiday season, feel free to steal the Veskmas Shop em and Drop em sales event or to build something similar into another game that you might be running. But the time has come for me to turn the conversation over to you. So, what do you think of my gaming group's holiday tradition? Do you like the Veskmas Shop em and Drop em sales event? Are there other absurd elements that you would suggest that I could add to it? Because I would love to surprise my players with some new options this year. And if your group has something fun that you do to celebrate the holiday season, let me know in the comments section down below. If you're interested in being more involved with the Disaster Tour Guide community, you can check out my free Discord page, which is linked in the video description. And there are some conversations going on there that will be affecting the videos that I plan to release in the new year. So come be a part of those conversations. And if you're interested in supporting my channel financially, you can find a link to my Patreon page in the video description as well. Thank you so much for being here. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and as always, have a wonderful day.